Hello, my dear pupils. How are you today? My name is Jackson Magige, a mathematics teacher. I welcome all of you to our online learning program. So come close to your TV so that we may start together and we learn today's lesson. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to practice and to solve questions that are related from today's topic. So for today, we are going to learn about exponents and radicals. And specifically, we are going to learn on squares. So we are going to do the revision of squares. Squares is not a new topic to you. It is a subtopic we have learned in the previous classes. We learned this topic in class five. We learned it in class six and now in class seven. So we are going to see the revision of it from what we had learned in the previous classes. So it's not a new topic. I urge you to pay attention so that you don't miss anything from today's lesson. So to start with, let us see what is this square. A square is a product of two similar numbers. That is, when two similar numbers are multiplied, the product is a square of the multiplied numbers. So a square is a product of two similar numbers. These numbers has to be similar. When you multiply the numbers that are similar, the answer you get is what we call a square. So a square comes from numbers that are of the same. We have squares one by one, two by two, three by three, and so forth, as long as these numbers are similar. So let's have a look at the figures we have. One by one, a two by two, a three by three. At least these numbers are of the same. Where do we find these squares? How are they important to us? Squares can help us to find the area of the plots we have. We can also find the area of the rooms. So it's very, very important for us. You have a square plot, you have a square room, you have an area that is squared. So we can use this square to find the area of various areas that we also live. These are a few examples on the squares. One by one, we have seen the answer is one. Two by two is four. Three by three is nine. Four by four is 16. 5 by 5 is 25, 6 by 6, we get that 6. So you can see now, these answers we are getting here, 
this answers we have here has come from the numbers that are of the same. So the answers we have here are coming from the factors that are of the same. So we simply call these answers as the squares. As we said, a square is a product of two similar numbers. And you can see now these squares are coming from the two similar numbers. So when you are told to find the square of a number, you are asked to multiply the number by itself. So the answer you get is what we call the square. Yes. Have a look at the numbers we have here. We have one. We have four. There is nine. There is 16. There is 25. There is 36. There is 49. 64. 81. And 100. What comes into your mind? From the numbers listed here. What comes into your mind? Well, you can realize that these numbers we have, we have gotten them by multiplying two similar numbers. We have gotten them by multiplying two similar numbers. So generally, such a numbers, we can call them perfect squares. So the squares that we have gotten from two similar numbers, we call them perfect squares. Of course, you can agree with me that there are numbers we can multiply to get a certain number. Two by three, we get six. But these numbers are not similar. Four by three, twelve. We have gotten the answer. But it has not come from the two similar numbers. Therefore, we don't call it a perfect square. So perfect square is when we get an answer from two similar numbers. Uh, perfect squares or square numbers, while one of their factors is called square root. Now you can see, one by one we have gotten, the answer is one. So the two factors we multiplied the two factors we multiplied, we call them square roots. But in this case, we tend to take one, one root. In this case, we tend to take one root. Square, square numbers, while one of their factors is called a square root. <clears throat> For example, let us have a look at these numbers. We are told find the squares of the following numbers. This is our question. We find the square of the following numbers. How do we find the square of 15? find the square of 15. Find the square of 15. That tells us we will take the number 15 by 15. So we square the number. We square the number. We multiply the number by itself so that at last, we come and get 200. At last, we come and get 225. So there, we say that 
the square of 15 is 225. The square of 15 is 225. So we have gotten the answer from multiplying two similar numbers. And therefore, we can as well as call 255 as a perfect square. As a perfect square. Next. One over six. Find the square of one over six. The same thing, we take the number by itself, one over six by one over six. Multiply one over six by one over six. Therefore, therefore, one by one is equals to one over six by six is equals to thirty-six. So in this area, when you are told to find the square of a fraction, we are asked to multiply because fraction has got three parts. It has got the numerator, there is a segment, and there is also a denominator. So the numerator has to be squared to be multiplied by itself, and also the denominator has to be multiplied by itself. So you can see I multiplied one by one, I got one, and also six by six, I got at six. So you do it in the numerator, and also you do it in the denominator. Number three. Two point one. Find the square of two point one. The same thing, but in this case now we have got decimal places. So it's very much important to consider the number of decimal places when you are given a question of decimals and you are required to find the square of such a number. So decimal places are very important. So in this case, 2.1 is going to be 2.1 times 2.1. So you can see now, because you have to multiply the number by itself. So it is 2.1 by 2.1. Now I have created two decimal places. Now I have created two decimal places. There is one decimal place on the left, and there is also another decimal place on the right. So I have got two decimal places. Very important to mark that. Very important to note that. So you can as well as, Put the decimal places aside. My question contains two decimal places. Therefore, I can pick the numbers without necessarily taking the decimal places and I multiply them. 21, 21. Without the decimal places, I multiply them. Already, I have the two decimal places aside. So one by one is one, one by two is two, and two by one is also two, but two by two is four. You get the answer. So you get one, and we add here, four, then four. Good. I've gotten 441, but I had two decimal places. So I have to come and place the number of decimal places I had. You count from the right to the left. So one, two, one, two. That means I'm going to have 4.41. And this is my final answer. So number of decimal places are very important. Next.
Not necessarily now to be asked to find only the squares. We have seen on how to square the numbers. A time you can be asked among the numbers may be listed. Sort out the ones that are perfect squares. Like in our fourth example, which of the following numbers are perfect squares? If you remember what we said before, that these perfect squares, we get them after multiplying two similar numbers. So we get the perfect squares after multiplying two similar numbers. That means out of my numbers I have here, there are numbers that are gotten by multiplying the two similar numbers. There are numbers we have gotten after multiplying the two similar numbers. Let's have a look. 25. Yes, we have gotten 25 by multiplying 5 times 5. It's equal to 25. So 25 is a perfect square. Yes, 50? No. Because we can get 50 by multiplying different numbers. 2 times 25. You get 50, but these factors are not the same. 5 times 10, we also get 50, but they are not the same. 1 times 50, they are not similar. So 50 is not. 36, think about that 6 there. 2 times 18, 36. Are they similar? No. 4 times 9, 36. But are they similar? No. What of 6 by 6? Good. That's 6. So 6 by 6 gives us that 6. So that 6 is a perfect square. 16. How do we get 16? 4 by 4. Good. Though there are other factors you can multiply to get 16, like 2 times 8. But in this case, we are talking of perfect squares. That the answer you have gotten has come from two similar numbers. So 16 is a perfect square. 24 is not. The numbers you can multiply to get 24 are not of the same. 49, automatically 7 by 7. It is 80 is not 64. Of course, 8 by 8. Though there are other numbers, but at least there is a number you can multiply by itself to get 64. So 64 is perfect square. 77 is not. 81? Yes. So in question 4 now, we come and give our answer in question 4. Perfect squares, we have got 25. We have got 36, we have got 16, we have got 49, we have got 64, we also have 81. So if you look at these numbers I've listed, if you look at these numbers I've listed, at least you realize that the answers that we have has come from factors that are of the same, has come from factors that are of the same. After having seen on how to get the squares, 
we are now able to get the squares, then let us now see on how to get also what we call an exponent. Now let us move and see what we call exponents. You remember our topic is exponents and radicals. Then let us see what is this exponent. So an exponent is a number that shows how many times a number has been multiplied by itself. Leave the squares. Squares, we said, a square is a product of two similar numbers. And now, in this case, I'm saying an exponent is a number that shows us how many times a number has been multiplied. Only show us. Only tells us this number has been multiplied for a certain number. It's only showing us. For example, we have got five raised to power two. And it is read as five power two or five squared. Or we can also read it can also read as five exponents two. So the three of them are accepted. It is read as five raised to power two. You can also read that as five exponent two, or you can also say five squared. So the three are accepted. Question two, the next example, seven raised to power three, and it's read as seven power three. Seven power three. So in this case, the three we have, the two we have, is what we call exponents. So this one tells us Five is multiplied how many times? And this show us seven is multiplied three times. Seven times seven times seven. So what is telling us how many times seven has gone? It is this exponent. So this is an exponent. As we saw, it's the number that show us how many times a number has been multiplied. The number that show us how many times a number has been multiplied. So you can see in this case we have got two up here. So this is an exponent. It shows us five is going to be multiplied how many times? We have got three here. Also show us how many times that number has been multiplied. So a time now, you can be told, you can be given a number and asked to, to write it in an exponential form. That means we should see numbers raised up. Like this one is an exponential form. So you are given a whole number, like in this case we are going to see on how to, to write them in exponential form then you are asked to find, to write the number in exponential form. So let us go and see on how to write the numbers in exponential form. We have got 16 here. We 
we write 16 in exponential form. Simply factorize the number we have. Simply factorize the number you have. We have got by two here is eight, by two there is four, also by two is two, and by two there is one. These are my factors I have. These are my factors I have. I say them, they are factors because when you multiply them two by two, by two by two, you'll go back to 16. So they are the factors. Two by two by two by two. Have expanded this, have factorized that number, but the, the question needs me to write in exponential form. Therefore, can you count the number of factors we have? One, two, three, four. And they are of the same. Two times two times two times two. How many times has, it, has two appeared? Four times. Therefore, write that two has come four times. Right, two has come four times. Therefore, we conclude by saying the exponential form of 16 is 2 raised to power 4. 2 raised to power 4. Let us go and check the third example. Twenty-seven. Write 27 in exponential form. The same thing, we expand the number 27. 3 goes there by 9. 3 there by 3. 3 there also by 1. So 3 times 3 times 3, of which is 3 by 3 by 3. And when you multiply the numbers, you should go back to the square itself. That means 3 by 3 is 9, by 3 you get 27. So you don't end up writing it only at this level, but proceed and write the number in exponential form. Therefore, my answer is going to be 3 raised to power 3, 3 raised to power 3. So 3 is telling us how many times that number has been multiplied. 3 is telling us how many times that number has been multiplied. We conclude by saying 3 raised to power 3 is an exponential form of 27. Question 4. Question 4, 7 raised to power 3 times 7 raised to power 5 times 7 raised to power 2. Seven raised to power three, seven raised to power five, seven raised to power two. We write that one also in exponential form. How do we do it? Well, we can mean because this one is telling us how many times the number has been multiplied. So we can get those numbers. It tells us seven has come how many times? Therefore, we can get those seven. Seven by seven by seven. This is what this one is telling us. This is what this three is telling us, that seven has come three times. And also the second one is seven has come five times. One, two, three, four. And lastly, this one tells us seven has appeared two times. 
Therefore, by 7, also by 7. And now, we can count the number of sevens that we have there. Count by yourself there. Good. You have realized that seven has, we have now ten of them, ten of this seven. So we simply write as seven raised to the power ten. Seven raised to the power ten. Therefore, from there, you leave your answer raised to the power ten, and this tells us now seven has appeared ten times. Well, in this, as long as this base are the same, do you see the base? Seven, seven, seven. The base are the same. And we have got a multiplication sign. What do you think has happened to get this 10? Just have a look. This is seven, seven, seven. It is this seven. And we have the powers three, five, two. But finally, we have gotten 10. What has happened to these powers? Well, it's like adding three plus five plus two. Adding three plus five plus two. So if the base are the same, and we simply have a multiplication sign here, we can as well as add this one without expanding. You'll we'll simply also get the answer, the same, same answer. Let's have a look at the next example. Let's have a look at the next example. This was to be two. This to be three. Now the fourth one. Four raised to the power eight divided by four raised to the power raised to the power five. And we write our answer in exponential form. We write our answer in exponential form. We write our answer in exponential form. The same thing we can expand because this tells us four has appeared eight times. So in this case, I can as well as write four raised to the power eight over four raised to the power five. I hope you understand me here that the sign I have, I have changed it to be in this form. It's not something new to you. But the question remains the same. Therefore, four has come eight times, so expand four by four by four by four. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight times over. This case, four has come five times. There are five of them. We can simply simplify this here once, here, this one, this. How many fours have we remained with? We have remained with four by four by four, whereby we can now give our answer as four raised to power three. We can give our answer as four raised to power three. So I expanded. So I expanded.
I expanded the upper one, I expanded the lower one, and later I canceled them out. Four by four one, four by four one. So I realized five of them canceled each other, and I remained with the three. So the same case as we did here, now you can realize something that this base are the same. The powers are different. Since the base are the same, I have got the same, same base. But now the powers has decreased to three. What has happened? Simply take away eight minus five. If only the base are the same. If only the base are the same. And we have a division sign. So division sign we take away if the base are the same. So we only take away the powers. Multiplication we have seen. The base are the same. In the multiplication, we just add the powers. Alternatively, you expand like that, and then you end up getting your answer. Having seen on how to find the squares, on how to find the exponents, how to write the exponents, and finally, I have some work for you to do. So my dear pupils, take your time. Write these questions down and solve them by yourself. I have an exercise for you to do. So the first question is, the number of pupils in a school is equivalent to the square of the number of their teachers. If there are 23 teachers in the school, find the number of pupils. The number of pupils in a school is equivalent to the square of the number of their teachers. If there are 23 teachers in the school, find the number of pupils. I hope you have done with that. Next. Write 125 in its exponential form. Write 125 in its exponential form. Question three. Find the value of five over six squared. Find the value of five over six squared. Question four. Given that the number of fans in a football match is a square of the players, find the number of fans if there are 22 players. Question four. Given that the number of fans in a football match is a square of the players, find the number of fans if there are 22 players. The last one. There are 150 pupils in a class. If the pupils contributed money for condolence, which is amounted to the square, of their numbers, how much money was collected? Copy the question. Lastly, you write the last statement. And after you have gotten now your answers, try to compare the answers you have gotten with my answers. The first one should be 529 pupils. The second is equal to 5 raised to power 3. 
Then the third is 25 over 36. The fourth one is 484 funds. Number five is 22,500 shillings. My dear pupils, it is my hope that this work is going to be beneficial to you. Take your time, practice them again. Look for more questions on the same topic and you make sure you don't get trouble on this. With what we learned today, with the help of your parents at home, the guardian at home, you are going to do this work. So I wish you all the best and see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.